All right, welcome to Grace Baptist Church, uh, Bloomingdale, Georgia. We uh, into a new year, and uh, last week we preached about uh, the blind man in John chapter nine. And uh, as I try to do at the beginning of the year, I try to try to start my reading through the Bible. So you take a book of the New Testament and you take Old Testament book, and if you if you uh, take uh, one at the new and one at the old, you will you actually read through your Bible and quite and uh good bit of time. Uh, there, then there's, there's a, just a, the, the reading and then there's the study. Now studying, meditating, of course, that'll be a, a, a longer time as far as your Bible is concerned. But uh, it'll be good for every Christian to read through their Bible from, uh, uh, from time to time. Amen? Amen? Just refresh yourself with some things that... Uh, and uh, somebody said, I told you, somebody said after you've been preaching for about 10 years, go back and uh, look at those messages and see how much you've grown in those 10 years. And see, looking at the same message, can you see more things? And I find that to be true. And I thank the Lord for that, that the Word of God is what we call inexhaustible. Amen? And so, but we were in John chapter 9 and last week. And I like the man in John chapter 9. I uh, really like that, that individual, that blind guy, because I like his message to the Pharisees. Amen? I just love the way the Lord, and it really goes with what the Lord said. He said, for judgment I come in this world. He said, those that are blind will see, and those that can see uh, might be made blind. And that man is an abject illustration of that. And when he preaches to them, that is, you can't tell me the Lord ain't got a sense of humor. I mean, because that is, that is just so delightful when I read that. And he's like, hearing is a marvelous thing. <laughs> and uh, um, we might miss it, but they didn't miss it. He said, uh, that was all, they said, thou was altogether born in sin, and dost thou teach us? Because <laughs> He, so he was holding, he was holding court, amen. <laughs> and they and they wasn't liking, they wasn't liking it. Uh, but I want to go to the next chapter, John chapter ten. Uh, that's where we're going to be. I'm jumping off the point this morning. But I um I heard some of the news media, I've, and I've heard this uh, uh, this uh, uh, phrase, and I know that you probably have heard it as well. And uh, uh, if you've been reading anything uh, slightly political or hearing uh, the political news, you can't help but hear this word used. Uh, and it's a word that's uh, usually associated with Christians at we're, what we are likened unto. But uh, in the political realm, it, it, they've used it and made up a derogatory term. And uh, I, I looked it up and I, I, I Googled it and it's called a sheeple. Uh, and I looked it up and I, I, I looked it up and I was in a... You may, heard, may have heard it as sheep for short, but it's sheeple. And I looked it up, and uh, I got this. I read this about it. It says, um, uh, and in fact, I, I read in uh, Wikipedia, and they said what happened was, it was appearing, this word sheeple was appearing so, so much in documents and in news and in periodicals and everything else that Wikipedia said we gonna, we, they had to add it as a word. And so... Uh, it comes from uh, it says where it says sheep. It, it says what is the meaning of sheep and politics? Is is a sheeple? Is a sheep plus people? A sheeple, people who are docile, compliant, or easily influenced, like like an the sheep. And but they use it in a derogatory uh, way. It says if you spend any time online, you know that sheeple is a word you use when you want to yell at an otherwise uh, undefined group. Uh, of people, it is an insult. The blogging masses used to call someone a dummy following a person or ideology without knowing why they're following said uh, said uh, person, uh, following a said person or ideology, right? But, uh, and I thought about this right here. I said, you know what? I said, uh, uh, they've taken a word that's uh, attributed us for Christians for good. Uh, uh, I, I know this right here. Growing up, uh, I didn't didn't go to church much and everything else and family wasn't in and out of that. But I do this right here. I knew Psalm 23. I knew somewhat of Psalm 23. Amen. And I knew it was about a sheep. Amen. That's one thing. Uh, I told you my daddy, uh, you know, uh, 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 he uh, drank uh, most of his life and everything else. But I do remember uh, when I would visit him and uh, reading him and saying something about Psalm 23. And it's amazing because at this point in his life, he didn't even know who I was. But you know what he knew? Psalm 23. He had been taught that as a young man. He didn't know who I was, but he knew Psalm 23. And uh, Psalm 23 talks about a sheep and a shepherd. Amen. And so they, I, I thought this world, it takes uh, 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 this something that's good and use it bad. But I said, you know, what? as a Christian, you know, what? I'm still a sheep. Amen. 
I don't care what the world calls me. Now, I'm not a, the, the, the political sheep that they're talking about, uh, uh, following somebody blindly uh, in ideology I don't know anything about. I try to apprise myself and try to read uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, some information and everything else so I can be an informed electorate, okay? Uh, but I, when it comes to Christianity, I'm definitely uh, a sheep that needs a shepherd. Amen. And I, I don't say, you know what, I, and I would tell anybody that. And if they wanted to say, well, you a sheep, oh, then I'd say, you know what, uh, then so be it. Amen. Uh, but I, 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 I thought about this. And you know what, I don't care what this world says about this, all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I believe this right here. You know what, um, to a certain degree in God's economy, uh, they don't understand. But God looks at it like this right here in Isaiah 53. He says, all we like sheep. Amen have gone astray. And to some degree, you know what? Everybody's a sheep in one regard because you're following somebody. Amen? You're following somebody. You're following somebody's leadership, somebody's idea, something. You are following. And I found out this right here. It's not the, the position of the sheep so bad. You know what it is? Or that makes it bad. It's uh, what makes the real difference is the shepherd. Amen? It's the shepherd. That's who makes the real difference. And so I said, you know what? Uh, even Jesus said this right here, because God sees you as your sheep. Even Jesus said in Mark chapter 6, verse 34, when he, you know, when he saw the moats, you know how he saw them? He said, I saw them as sheep scattered without a shepherd. And you know what it says? He had compassion on them. Amen. So I don't care if this world sees me and they says, well, you're this, that, and the third. Let me tell you something. I'm interested in the way how God looks at me. Amen. And so, uh, matter of fact, this right here, God, Jesus Christ, he looks at me as that lost sheep that needs to be saved. Amen. And you know what? I'm so glad that he looked at me like that. Amen. And so, that he had compassion. But again, the shepherd makes the difference. Now, come if you will to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. And we were in John 9 last week. We were in John chapter 10. And uh, I started, honestly, uh, I started to main, name this message uh, that uh, I, I, uh, I'm a sheep. And I thought that if I named it, I'm a sheep, that in my mind, I said, somebody might see that. And somebody might say, oh, there goes one of those people. And let me read a little bit about it, but then find out I was talking about something else. But honestly, when you read John chapter 10, it's more so about the shepherd. Amen. And it talks about the sheep, right? But it's more so about the shepherd. So I named the message, the good shepherd. Amen. The good, so Richard writing that down. The good shepherd. <laughs> the good shepherd. Right? He's writing the good shepherd that came from all that. <laughs> but... <laughs> the good shepherd. I saw last week's <laughs> message. Uh, it said, um, "Blind." It said, "Are we blind?" Part two. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> yeah, I said. I said. I said. I, I named the message. Uh, uh, um, yeah, to let your light so shine. <laughs> so when I, read, when I read that thing, it said, it said part two. I just laughed. I said, you know, it don't matter what you name it, amen. Uh, I said, especially the rich, you don't matter. <laughs> but uh, I just laughed. I said, you know what? I said, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, God can take, God has to, you listen to me, God has to take our failures and our shortcoming, amen, and, and make something out of for his honor and glory, amen. And you say what you want, you know what? That's, that's what he does, amen. That's what he does. But the, the things that we think are the worst, uh, worst experiences or worst things that happen in our life, let me tell you something, those very things, you know what God does? God uses those for his honor and his glory and uses you to be a benefit to somebody else. Remember John chapter 9 last week, that, remember that family and his blindness and them having to go up to that point in that man's life. And, and God knowing all along that this, he would use that man way beyond his parents ever thought, way beyond he ever thought. He, he never in a wild dream thought that he would be in that position saying that to those men, but there he was. Amen? Amen. So God does it. That's the way he works. But I thought about this thing, and if you will, uh, go there, and there's, the, there's our, our title right there. Look at verse 11. It says, uh, this is Jesus talking. He says, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Amen? And so that's why I say this right here. Uh, we're all sheep. Let me tell you something. But the difference is the shepherd. Amen? And you know what? I, I, I say, thankfully, you know what? That Jesus Christ is my shepherd. Amen? I say that unashamedly as a grown man at 60 years old. You know what I mean? I don't care how old. You know what? Uh, I, uh, it's like uh, uh, that song that... Um, uh, how firm a foundation. Y'all remember that song as it says, and how it talks about uh, when we get older and everything else and how he take us up as lambs and still guide us on. Amen. Uh, let me tell you, I'm six years old, but you know what? I still need my shepherd to guide me. 
Amen. Amen. I still need my shepherd to guide me. I still, I still need him to lead me beside the still waters. Amen. I still need him to make a, a, a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Amen. And guess what? Guess what? Uh, he still makes my cup runneth over. Amen. So I need a shepherd. I don't care what this world says. But that's the difference. And I say that just right here. You know what? There's some bad shepherds. Amen. There's some bad shepherds. Now, I know sheep can get out of line, but there's some bad shepherds. Amen. Uh, take your Bible. Even now, we're coming back to John chapter 10. But I want to show you all some of these bad shepherds that the Lord talked. Go, go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. In Ezekiel chapter 34, the Lord had something to say about these shepherds that were uh, governing his people Israel in the Old Testament. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 34, look at this verse 1. He says, and the, and the word of the Lord came unto me saying, and uh, that's just Ezekiel, and he says, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Right? Shouldn't they feed the flock? He says, Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with wool, Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. He said, uh, the diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye uh, uh, healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye brought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost. The very illustration in the, in the New Testament, Jesus Christ, gave, remember he talks about the lost son, the lost coin, and the lost what? The lost sheep. Remember that in the book of Luke talks about the lost sheep, right? And remember he, how the shepherd leaves the ninety and nine and goes and get that one, amen? Uh, you all know at some point in our life, guess what? Uh, us were saved, we was all that one, amen? Watch this. He says, uh, he says uh, and scattered, he says, uh, neither have ye sought that which was lost, but at first with, and with cruelty have ruled, ruled them. When they were scattered because there's no said, and they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they became meat to all the beasts of the field. When they were scattered, my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, be, uh, surely because my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat. To uh, every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock out of their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. Thus saith the Lord. Uh, the uh, Lord God, behold, I, even I, will both search uh, my sheep and seek them out, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the, uh, the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of, out of all the places where they have scattered them in the cloud and in the day. You know what that sounds like? That's like? That sounds like God's going to have a good shepherd. Amen. You know what? That's none other, than the, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, verse 13, And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel uh, by the rivers and in all the inhabitants, uh, inhabited uh, places of the country. And I will feed them in the good pasture. Sound like Psalm 23, doesn't it? Make me lie down in the what? Green pastures. He says, And upon the high mountains of Israel shall they fold be. Uh, they, uh, there shall they lie in good fold, and in the fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. And I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. And I will seek that which was lost, and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. Amen. So there is some bad shepherds. Amen. And God said there's, pronounced, there's a pronounced judgment on on the bad shepherds. But this morning, you know what I want to talk about? I want to, I want to brag on our Savior. Amen? Amen? I want to talk about the good shepherd. Amen? Amen. Because you know what? Uh, this world, you know, it's, uh, they're derogatory toward the things of Jesus Christ. Now the little word sheep, you know what I mean? They're going to use that in derogatory. Uh, as I said, I said, you know what? I'm thankful that I am a sheep of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, sir. So there's some things about this good shepherd that I think we need to examine and look into. First of all, 
And it's right, the good shepherd, if you go back to John chapter 10 now, we're going to be in John chapter 10, we're going to move around a little bit, but we're going to be in John chapter 10 for our main points. John chapter 10. Now let me read, let me go ahead and just read John chapter 10 before we get into the message. I said I need to do that, read this. On down through here. John chapter 10, it's a wonderful chapter on the shepherd. Uh, and his sheep, John chapter 10 verse 1 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door unto the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. He says, but he, that entereth in, uh, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. He says, To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Uh, somebody said the, uh, the shepherds of Israel were different. Uh, and how they dealt with their sheep, you know, practically said they led them. They didn't drive them. They went before them. Amen. Uh, I looked at my Bible and my Bible tells us this right here. We're supposed to be looking unto Jesus, right? He's the author and finisher of our faith. So you know what? So he's before us. Is that right? We're supposed to follow. So he says, uh, to him the porter openeth and to the, sh uh, the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. When he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, and they know not the voice of a stranger. I, I saw a guy, he did a practical thing. He said, uh, he said, let's see if the Bible's true. And he went out to a field. He said, this guy's the, the shepherd. And he said, I'm just a reporter. He said, how do you call your sheep? And so he told him how he called his sheep. And he called the sheep. And the sheep stopped eating. They just looked at him. Then the shepherd called the sheep. They came running. Amen. I thought that was so good. They just, they just came running. So he says, uh, uh, verse 5, And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things were uh, they were which he spoke on, spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before uh, me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I'm the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So he's using this analogy of sheep for more than, it's, just, it's more than just physical, there's a spiritual thing here. Is that right? Sure it is, because he says, go in and out and be saved. He says, verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd who's on the sheep or not, seeth the wolf cometh and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, uh, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. I'm the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep have I, which are not of this fold, them also must I, I, I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received my father. There was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, he hath the devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, uh, these are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem when the feast of the dedication was winter. Uh, dedication, it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in uh, Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews, ran about him, and said unto him, How long dost thou make us doubt? If thou be Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. You see that? So it's more than just a knowledge. It has to do with eternal life. He says, eternal life, and they shall never perish Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. This is one of those verses that the, uh, the people that don't believe in eternal security, they say, you know what they say? But you can jump out. Right. <laughs> he says, neither uh, uh, shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father which gave them 
of me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. I don't see how they can see that because he's given us eternal life, not temporary life. Amen. I am my father in one. And he goes on to this discourse, but I, I, I like this discourse because it says a whole lot right there. So the first thing I saw this right here is the good shepherd. Why is he the good shepherd? You know why? The good shepherd, he gives his life for the sheep. Amen. He said that in verse 11. I am the good shepherd. I give his, uh, he says, uh, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. He said it uh, in verse uh, 15. He says, as the father knoweth me, even so I, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Uh, he said it in verse 17. He says, I lay down my life. Uh, he said it in verse 18, I lay down of myself, I have power to lay it down, I have power to take it again. You know why he's a good shepherd? Not a bad shepherd because you know what? Uh, he lays down his life for the sheep, amen? Uh, remember what he said about, y'all remember what he said about them, uh, and I read that in the book of Ezekiel, and he talks about them bad shepherds. You never heard about them that it said they lay down their life, does it? They fleece the sheep, uh, they take advantage of the sheep, they take the wool of the sheep and all this kind of stuff, but you know what? They never lay down their life. Never tells them, uh, yes, I'm a Christian and I'm a sheep, but you know what? I have a wonderful shepherd, amen? amen. He laid down his life for me, Amen. He laid down his life for me, a sheep, amen? Not, be, you know, let me just, not because I deserve it, but because he loved me. That's what John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? He loved me. I uh, know it's just right here. Uh, 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 by doing so, you know what he did? He gave me eternal life. Amen? He provided for me eternal life. That's why, you remember what it says here? Isaiah 53 says, All we like what? Sheep have where? Gone where? Have gone astray. See, in that he laid down his life, it's more than somebody just dying. It's, sure, it's trying to tell us, it's right here, that he laid down his life so that we can have eternal life. Uh, by laying down his life, go to Isaiah chapter 53. Now, we're coming back to uh, John chapter uh, 10 there. But go to Isaiah chapter 53. In laying down his life, he provided this eternal salvation that I, I enjoy. You know, let me tell you, uh, there's a lot of, even as a Christian, you know, I have worries, I concern, and all this kind of stuff. But guess what? My salvation ain't one of them. Amen. Amen. I, mean, just, um, I get up and I'm concerned about maybe what the job's going to hold for me Sunday, uh, you know, Monday morning. I'm concerned about, you know, uh, uh, is, is this appliance in my house? You know, the, uh, is you know, it, it going to get fried? Is it going to work? And all this kind of stuff. Is, you know, am I going to have a church fellowship? Come on, my house. Is the toilet going to back up, back up? I got all kind of concern. But my salvation, my shepherd dying for me, let me tell you something, that is not one of my concerns. And I'm so glad, amen. I'm so, I'm, I, that's why I have a one. That's why I saw a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord, amen. Wonderful Shepherd, I have no complaints, amen. Uh, have I strayed a plenty, amen? Have I gotten out of line a plenty? Have I not paid attention as a sheep a plenty and got astray? But you know what? Guess what? My Shepherd has never left me, amen. He never. Hey, let me tell you something. I never read my Bible where my Shepherd ever regretted dying for me. No, sorry, I have a good shepherd. Look at this. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4. For surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him a stricken, smitten of God. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep. See, let me tell you something. Here's the reality. You either are all sheep or you're saved sheep. You're the lost to save. He said, and you know what? That depends on the shepherd you got. Amen. My shepherd made sure I'm saved. Amen. He said, verse uh, 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 6, All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. Do you see? That? So when we say the shepherd, when he said the shepherd's given his life for the sheep, let me tell you, it's not some passing thing. It's talking about something that was done for us that we might have eternal life. Uh, look, uh, and I wrote some things down. This right here. By Jesus Christ died. You know what it is, right? He redeemed us from sin. He redeemed us. That shepherd died. He redeemed us from sin. Watch this. Go if you will. Now, we're going to come back to Isaiah there. But go if you will to 1 Peter. Look at this. 1 Peter chapter 1. And look what your Bible says. You know what I found out? I said, you know what? Uh, I'm glad I have a good shepherd in Jesus Christ. You know what? Uh, they could have all these other shepherds. You know what they'll never do? Their shepherd will never be able to redeem them from sin. Amen. Amen. 
I don't care. Let, let, let me tell you something. You can vote for Mr. Trump. You can vote for uh, Mr. Biden. I call him Mr. They, they have the position as former president, president. Amen. We as Christians. Now, uh, now somebody said, well, some, Jesus called him Fox. Okay. Well, you know what? Uh, okay. But <laughs> you know, if they acted like a fox, I'll call them a fox. Okay. But uh, uh, they still have the respect as far as that position is concerned. Amen. But let me tell you something. No, none of them can, you know what? None of them are a shepherd like Jesus Christ. Amen. No sorry. Watch this. Uh, uh, First Peter chapter one. It says this right here. If I get, I gotta get there. First Peter chapter one, verse eighteen. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot. See, my shepherd. My shepherd. You know what he did? He died to redeem me from sin. Amen. He died. I have, a, I have a good shepherd. That's why he's the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Amen. And in doing so, he redeemed me from sin. Let me tell you something. In doing so, he reconciled me back to God. Let me tell you something. Every time you see Jesus Christ, when he's talking about the sheep mostly, he said he sees us as scattered, lost, in need of a shepherd. Amen. Guess what my shepherd did? He reconciled me back. You know what? I was lost, but now I'm saved. Amen. I'm reconciled to God. I'm, that's why I know his voice. He, I'm known of him, and he, I know him, and he knows me. Amen. Watch this. Uh, watch this. I'm talking about reconciliation. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. By his death, my good shepherd reconciled me back to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Very familiar passage of scripture. He says, uh, verse uh, 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 14 for the love of Christ constraineth us love because we thus judge that if one die for all that are dead and that he died for all that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto, him, unto them which died for them jump down if you will at verse 18 he says and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and a committed on us the word of reconciliation now then we are as uh, now then uh, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God for it made him to be sin for us and knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him amen through Jesus Christ through that good shepherd dying for me you know what he did he reconciled me to my God amen we were lost he wasn't lost amen, amen. you know people act like, act like God is lost God's not lost. You lost. Amen. You are astray. Amen. And watch this. Come back here in Isaiah. Come back. This. Let's finish reading here in Isaiah. Look at this. Because it points and shows you all the things that God uh, attributed us and went through when he died. It's not just a statement, the good shepherd giving his life for the, uh, uh, for the sheep. There's, there's a whole lot to that statement. He says uh, in Isaiah verse uh, 7, he says, uh, he was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter as a sheep before his shears is so uh, is dumb, so opening not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. For a, uh, he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Here it is, verse 10. But yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for what? Sin. Do you see that? When, G, when he said, when the good shepherd, he said, the good shepherd giveth his life. What life? He's given his life for those sheep. Why? Right? So that those that are sinners, guess what? Can be forgiven of their sin. Amen. Let me tell you something. I, a politician, you know what? He may give you a, a tax break. Uh, he may give you, you know, uh, uh, some time off work. They, this year, they're going to start a go stream. You, you get the, the, the family leave act. They may institute a family leave act. But ain't nobody going to give you forgiveness of sin except the good shepherd. Jesus Christ. Amen. Nobody. Nobody can do it. He said, I got power to throw it out of my life. I got power to take it up. Amen. Amen. That's a good shepherd. Amen. 
Yes, sir. Well, look at this. He says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offer for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. Look at this. By, my, by his knowledge shall my righteous uh, servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquity. That brings me to this third thing right here. Let me tell you this. Not only did he redeem me by his death, he reconciled me by his death, but you never tell you something. He made me righteous before God. Amen. He made me righteous before God. A lot of you know, again, you can see me as docile. You can see me as this. You can see me as uh, 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 just a follower and everything else. But let me tell you something. God sees me as righteous. Amen. I don't, let me tell you something. I don't care how many laws they pass. I don't care uh, how much you do and everything else. You never be righteous in God's sight without Jesus Christ. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. And right there, you be made righteous. Notice what he says. He says, Verse 11, uh, uh, he says, He shall uh, uh, see the, uh, the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant, watch this, justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Amen. You know what? Jesus took my sin. You know what? That makes me free. Amen. My sin is paid for in Christ Jesus. People say, how you know, how you know, how you know that, you, uh, 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 that uh, the debt is gone? Just like when you know uh, the debt is gone and they stamp that thing and it says, paid in full. Amen. You know what? Guess what? My sins are paid in full through Jesus Christ. I'm righteous before God. People say, well, that's ridiculous. You know why it seems ridiculous? Because you don't have the good shepherd. Amen. You don't know the good shepherd. You, you don't know the good shepherd. Yes, sir. I know this right here. You need to say what you want to. You know what? Uh, this good shepherd, he uh, again, he redeemed us from our sin. He reconciled me to God and he made me righteous before God. And he's, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, Philippians chapter 3, Paul says this right here. He talks about his righteousness, but he, now he says the righteousness of Jesus Christ, which is by faith. Amen? Righteous. That's what the good shepherd can do for you. Make you, make you righteous. Now watch this. Uh, again, go back, if you will, to John chapter 10. We're talking about eternal life. I know he uses this analogy, but John chapter 10, notice what he says in verse uh, 27. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Amen. You see that? Let me tell you I had a, uh, the good shepherd save my life. Amen. And my soul. I'll tell you something else the good shepherd did. The good shepherd directs his sheep. Amen. The good shepherd directs his sheep. Remember, remember when Ezekiel, the bad shepherd, he don't direct the sheep. You know what the bad shepherd does? The sheep get caught by the wolves. Remember that over Ezekiel? They get caught by the wolves. They became meat to all the beasts of the field. That's not what the good shepherd does. The, the good shepherd, he defends the sheep. Uh, and he directs the sheep. Watch this. Uh, back over in John chapter 10, how does he do that? He directs the sheep and he defends the sheep. You know what he says? With his word. You know what his, he calls it his voice. Look at this right here. Uh, look, if you will, at verse 3. He says, To him that openeth, the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name. Uh, look, if you will, at verse 4. He says, When he put forth his uh, own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know what? His voice. Uh, verse 5. And the stranger will they not follow. Uh, they will flee from him, for they know not the voice of a stranger. Verse 16, it says, uh, uh, And the other sheep have I, which are not of this fold. Them shall I also bring. They shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Uh, and then I think it is one more reference. Uh, verse uh, 27, yes. Verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and follow me. Amen. Let me tell you something. Hey, a real sheep hears the real shepherd. Amen. Real sheep hear the real shepherd. And the real shepherd is coming from the word of God. Amen. He said, the, the, why? The, John chapter 1 tells us, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, right? And the word was made what? Flesh, Flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. The word, Jesus Christ. And Jesus said this right here. Uh, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Let me tell you something. Uh, a real sheep regards the word of a shepherd. Does he not? The real, I mean, no, he keeps emphasizing that these real sheep, 
They hear His Word. Amen. I know it's just right here. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us about His Word. You realize this right here? Uh, 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 his Word. Uh, we're sanctified through the, through the Word. Uh, we're told in John chapter 5 verse 39 to search the Word. We're told in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 to study the Word. Let me tell you. James chapter 1 tells you to receive your meekness, the engrafted Word, which is able to do what? Save your... Let me tell you something. A real sheep has a real reverence and regard for the Word of God. Really? A real sheep? Yes, they do. It's like the shepherd's voice. It's soothing. It's not alarming. Amen? It's soothing. It's not alarming. No, sorry. That's why we all know that. When you, when you, uh, when you are reciting or reading uh, Psalm 23, and you read it to yourself silently, is your voice going, Lord, my shepherd, I shall not want. Is it panicked when you read it to yourself? Do you read it in that manner? No, you're reading, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. You, you conjuring up a, 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 a scene that's calm. He leading me beside the what? The still waters. Not the rapids. <laughs> We're not envisioning it. <laughs> a sheep drowning it's a calming voice amen it's not a confusing voice it's not something we're not familiar with this is this is what I'm talking about a real sheep you know what they have regard for the word of God amen why because to a real sheep you say what you want to when that shepherd takes that sheep to that pasture that shepherd knows that's exactly what that sheep needs and let me tell you, when God gives us the word of God as sheep, that's exactly, you know, I realize this right here, that, that, that word is our meat, it's our milk, it's our water, it's our honey, it's our bread. Doesn't the Bible say, give us this day our daily bread? Doesn't the Bible say, man should live by uh, 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 bread alone, but by every word that proceeded forth out of the mouth of God? It's our bread. It's a lamp under the feet and a light unto our path. It's the sword of the Spirit. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. So the Word of God is quick and power and sharp, powerful and sharper than two-edged sword. Amen. To a sheep, that is the most calming, most relaxing. The shepherd's here. Amen. The shepherd's here. Now, guess what? He's going to lead us to green pastures. Amen. You know why that's noteworthy? Because some people claiming to be sheep, but you know what? They got all kind of problem with the word. See, the real shepherd directs the sheep through the word of God. Amen. That's plain right here. His voice. His word. He calls them by name. Calls them by name. <laughs> I was thinking about this thing and I was like, man. Look what he called. Watch this. Come back here. I want you to show y'all something. Go back here. Go to John chapter 8. I want to show you something. John chapter 8. Jesus made this statement to a group of people that were around him. And I was thinking about this. John chapter 8. See, the good shepherd directs his sheep. He's speaking a language they understand. He, he leads those sheep. Amen. With his voice. With his voice. John chapter 8, look at this, verse 47. He that is of God heareth God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of what? God. I'm a, you know, I think about it, I was like, why is it that some people claim to be sheep, and you know, they have all this problem when they come. You know, they rejoice in, in the, the fact we got a good shepherd and everything else. But let me tell you, you know when they got problems? It's like men. They got problems when uh, 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 the good shepherd in the word of God, from the word of God, his voice says this right here. Love your wives. Even as Christ loved the church. I would say, you know what? They got a problem. What, how are they supposed to love their wives? Uh, uh, women, some women have a problem. You know what? And, oh, I'm, uh, uh, he's my shepherd and everything. And the shepherd said, well, you know what? I want you to uh, dress modestly. I want you to look a certain way. I want you to represent me. Amen. As, uh, as, and you know, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they got a problem. Uh, you know, it's, I, I noticed that sometimes we sheep, we like to get out of line. And, you know, we say, I like the word. But, you know, what? Uh, we like it until it rubs us the wrong way. Amen and amen. 
And you know what? Like one preacher said, he said he was preaching up a storm at some church, and some guy yelled out. And he said a guy actually yelled out in the service. He said, "Preacher, you rubbing the cat the wrong way." You know what he said? Turn the cat around. Amen. <laughs> See, the real thing is, the, he said, my sheep, you know what he said? My sheep know my voice. Amen. My sheep, my sheep. It's a lot of people, you know, they sheep as long as, you know what? Uh, uh, they come to the Baptist church. They Baptist sheep as long as Baptist feed. No, amen. They Methodist sheep as long as Methodist. They, people, you know, they, 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 they the sheep as long as the choirs singing songs they like. They, you know, they the sheep as long as everything is going their way, the way they, but when the Lord asked them to do something that he says as he's leading as a sheep, all of a sudden, you know what folks start saying? Stuff like this. Here's, here's stuff I've heard from professing sheep. Um, the Bible's got mistakes. Really? Well, I hope it ain't John 3.16, don't you? If I start having problems with the, the voice of the shepherd when he start asking them to do stuff, amen? See, the real shepherd is going to give real direction to real sheep. Amen? And they be, will be able to identify it. That's why he told that crowd in uh, John chapter 8, he said, you know what? He said, you don't hear God's word because you ain't God's sheep. Amen? See, because I found out the last thing that the shepherd. Oh, yes. My brother, let me tell you something. Uh, the church has been led by its shepherd through all kind of times. Do y'all realize that? Are we still here? Amen? I'm talking about this right here. Uh, the good shepherd directs his sheep through his word. Y'all know the, uh, 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 all kind of different isms, communism, uh, fascism, Nazism, uh, imperialism. Y'all know what they've been trying? Uh, fa- they've, they've tried to crush this word and everything else. But you know what? He, guess what? Through shady green pastures, you know what? God still led his ship, uh, sheep along. Amen? Some through the water, some through the flood, but all through the blood. And guess what? Even in 2022, God is still leading his sheep. Amen and amen. amen. Through his word. Amen. He said heaven and earth going to pass away, but my word is not going to pass away. Amen. And true sheep hear his true word still today. That's right. You know what the last thing the shepherd's going to do? I've read about this. He's going to divide the sheep from the goats. Yeah. See, Knowing the true shepherd and following the true shepherd, you know what? It brings division. Come back over here in John chapter 10 and look at this. John chapter 10, look at this. John chapter 10, verse, he reads all that, he says all that, and he gets up to verse 18, and he talks about laying down his life and everything else. Look at verse 19. Because of all this he said, verse 19 begins, there was a what? Division. What's the division about? He says, you know, what? I found out uh, 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 Jesus Christ and faith in him and, and his leading versus the world's leading, it's going to cause a division. We're going two different ways. Amen. That's why the Bible said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him, but all that's in the world. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away, but he that doeth the will of God shall abide forever. Amen. Well, two different directions. Verse 19 of John chapter 10, there was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for this saying. And many of them said, here's one side. He hath a devil. <laughs> he hath a devil and, and is mad. Why hear him? Others said, uh, these are not the words of him that hath a devil. By the way, can a devil open the eyes of the blind? There was a division. See, those have benefited from it. Let me tell you something. We hear his voice. Amen. We know what we're hearing. Remember in John chapter 9? I told y'all in John chapter 9. Remember they, the Pharisees got that guy. They kept saying, give God the glory. As far as we, we know that Moses spoke to God. But as far as this man, we know not. And he's like, I don't know about that. He said, but one thing I know, I was blind and that man made me see. Y'all can't deny that. And you can say what you want to. You know what? I know I was lost, and I know I heard the voice of a Savior. Amen? I know that I'm his sheep. I know that he's my Savior. See, the good shepherd, he divides. Look at this. Watch this. Watch, watch, watch he puts this. 
We're not just sheep, but notice he put this signature on there in, in verse 3 of John chapter 10. He says, to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his what? Own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Look, notice this own sheep. Uh, watch this. Look if you will at verse uh, 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 4. And when he put it forth his own sheep he go before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice uh, look if you will at verse 14 it says uh, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and have known of mine amen see you know just um, uh, uh, the, the good shepherd you know uh, he's going to come back and you know what he's going to do he's going to divide the sheep from the good. Everybody, you know, it's a whole lot. I mean, I'm going to tell you, I'll just be honest with you. I think it's a whole lot of people faking to be sheep for a myriad of reasons. Whether well, it's not somebody that likes, they like somebody in church, some political aspirations, you know, if I join this big church, they'll think, of what I, and all kind of stuff. But let me tell you something, you can fake and be phony and all this kind of stuff all you want to, but one of these days, when he come and divide the sheep from the goats, <laughs> it's going to, so you better be a real sheep. <laughs> Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 the, you know, uh, the, uh, the Bible says this right here. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Amen. See, let me tell you something. We can, you can profess it. You can say it. You can, uh, people can think it and everything else. But let me tell you something. God knows his own sheep. He will not be making any mistake. He will be 100% accurate. Amen. Kirk, take your will before I close. Take your will. Uh, take your will to your Bibles and turn uh, to the book of Matthew. And I'm going to show you something. Matthew. Matthew chapter 25. Now, I know for some of you doctrinal scholars and everything else, you say, oh, why is he going to the book of Matthew? Matthew chapter 24 is a, a, a tribulation text and everything else. And uh, Matthew chapter 25 has to do with the judgment of the nations and everything. I know what the doctrine says, but uh, inspirationally, let me give you something out there inspirationally. In Matthew chapter 5, 25, you know what you're going to find? You're going to find the Lord. And he gives these three uh, stories, parables, and it's about how verses 1, uh, Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, is about virgins. But there is the division. There's the wise virgins, and there's the foolish virgins. And look at verse 13, uh, that it says... Uh, at the end, as he talks about these virgins, watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man comes. It's a warning. There's some wise virgins and there's some foolish virgins. And then he goes on at verse 14 through 30, he talks about the profitable and the unprofitable servant. Both, knows, both of them are servants, but one's profitable and one's unprofitable. So you know what he's showing? He keeps making this division. And he ends with verse 30, and notice what he says about the unprofitable one. He says, uh, and, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, therefore there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So it's showing you more than just a story. He's getting into some spiritual stuff. Weeping and gnashing of teeth in outer darkness. That ain't, they just put you out of the, you know, put you out of the club. Friend, that's eternity. <laughs> then in verses 31, right, all the way to 46, he talks about something distinctly, and that's about sheep's and goats. Look at verse 21. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and, and all the holy angels with him and uh, then shall uh, he set upon the throne of his glory. This is the shepherd. Remember? He says, and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left hand. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. And I was stranger, and ye took me naked, and ye clothed me. And I was sick, and ye visited me, and I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer say, Lord, when saw we thee hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, as much as ye have did unto the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall they send him also unto him the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed unto everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Do you see this? There's a distinct division.
from his sheep and the other sheep. Or they're actually they're being identified for who they really were all along. Goats. Amen. You know what a, you know what a sheep does? Somebody said a long time ago, a sheep goes bah. Bah. Goat goes nah. <laughs> They said sheep are docile, they will. They really have no, they have, actually they have nothing. They, they got poor eyesight. They're not runners. You ever seen a sheep run? Most of them, if they try to run, they fall. If, some of them are so fat with wool that they fall on their back, they cannot, literally cannot get up. They're scared. Do you ever realize that? That's why the psalm says he's leading me beside the still waters. They are skittish. He couldn't take them by running water because they wouldn't come. They're too scared. They're drowned. That, that wool will get... Heavy with water and they'll drown. Drown. So they stay away from water. They, if you, sheep are, you ever seen some, they get pretty dirty. <laughs> they have no. So the shepherd has to protect them. He's their protect. Their protection is their numbers. Amen. They just, when a wolf comes, they just get a big circle. Goats, you know what goats do? Goats butt. Don't they? Yes, you tell goats in congregation, you know what goats are? The pastor will say, hey, the Bible says this, and a goat will say, but! <laughs> One of these days, you know what? God's going to identify those that are real, those that are fake. Amen? Yes, sir. Look at this. He says, verse 43, I am a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. And in prison, you visit not. Then shall they answer and say unto him, Lord, uh, what shall we do? Hunger, or thirsty, or stranger, or naked, or prison did not minister unto thee. Then shall you answer them, verily I say unto you, as much as you did not unto least of these, you did not unto me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous, you can talk about the sheep, into life eternal. See, let me tell you something. We all sheep, honestly. You either lost or saved. And that lost or saved is based on whether or not you got a good shepherd. Amen? I know I have a good shepherd in Jesus Christ. He's the good shepherd. Amen? Take your Bible and turn, if you will, and uh, look at this. Uh, 1 Peter chapter uh, 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Look what it says about our shepherd. 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 22. 1 Peter chapter 2. I think I got this right. Yes, 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 22 says, uh, who, did sin, who, uh, who did no sin? It's talking about our shepherd now. It says, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. And we suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself unto him that judges righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live under righteousness, by whose stripes you're healed. Does that sound familiar? But ye are but ye were as sheep going astray, but now return unto the shepherd and bishop for our souls. Amen. See, you're either a lost sheep or you're saved. Amen. Look, if you will, to Hebrews chapter 13. I'll let you go. Hebrews chapter 13. Look at this. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. It says, Now the God of peace and brought again that from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting co covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. That's the assessment. We had a wonderful shepherd, amen? Jesus Christ. This world might not think much of a sheep, amen? They might not think much of it at all. But Jesus Christ said, you know what? I came to seek and to save that which was lost. And that was that lost sheep, amen? Today, uh, you're either lost or saved by your shepherd. Amen. And I only know the Bible only speaks about one shepherd that can save you. That's the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's all stand for a word of prayer. We'll be dismissed.